everyone i hope everyone is doing good so welcome to another uh, video of uh, reproduction in humans so in the first video we covered the human male reproductive system prior to that the introductory part consisted of uh, asexual reproduction in sponges and in hydra that was just a brief introduction which you have already studied in detail in the 11th standard uh, so we began with the human male reproductive system uh, in which we covered the ts of testes and in this video we are going to discuss the other parts of the male reproductive system that is the accessory glands uh, what role do they play so we saw there were different glands prostate gland bulbourethral gland in the diagram if you have still not checked out the video please uh, see the previous video so that you will uh, be in a better position to understand the accessory glands of male reproductive system and we will also cover the last part of the male reproductive system that is the external parts external genitalia so let's begin so accessory parts you have all these ducts and all these glands okay so we are going to focus mostly on the prostate gland what is this gland what substances what hormones or fluids it secretes and how does it helps the sperm yes then another is the seminal vesicle that we are going to discuss then uh, you have somewhere over here in this diagram it's not mentioned i in the next diagram it will tell you it, it, it here a pair of glands a uh, small you know like pea sized gland is present this is known uh, they are known as uh, coppers glands or bulbo urethral gland okay so that we are going to see then this is your prostate uh, seminal and bulbo urethral gland so mostly we are going to cover the three glands uh, which play a very important role in the male reproductive system. So they're going to secrete certain important fluids or some uh, substances that is very important for the maturation of sperm and giving proper environment, right pH to the sperm or the uh, fluid. Okay. So let's begin other parts we have already discussed in the previous video if still you have not checked so please check out the first video uh, wherein we have discussed the different parts and their role in the uh, male reproductive system okay so let's begin with the first gland okay so first we will begin with the seminal vesicle now before we begin with the seminal vesicle let's just revise what we mean by gland remember what is a gland yes pause for a minute and just try to recollect what is a gland so basically glands are also a group of cells when group of cells come together what do they make what do they are what do they uh, are called as they are called as tissue when the tissue is doing secretion specifically when the specific function of that particular tissue is only secretion making certain substances in the liquid uh, or you know in the hormone form so they make that and then they just release it secrete it then specifically that tissue becomes a gland okay examples are salivary glands uh, then your pancreatic glands then your thyroid gland, which secretes thyroid hormone, thymus gland, yeah. And then uh, some of the glands that we are going to cover now, seminal vesicle, uh, it is also, though the gland surname is not there, but it is also producing certain substances and that is why it comes under the category of a gland. Then prostate gland, okay. So let's begin with the first uh, type of a gland in the male reproductive system, seminal vesicle. Vesicle is nothing but a vessel-like uh, organ, a vessel-like part, which is making something and storing into it. Okay, and after making an the substance which is stored into the seminal vesicle, time and again, whenever required, it is secreted. Secretes means what? Released into the semen into the sperm so the sperm and the fluid together they are known as semen the sperm plus the fluid and the fluid can be all the fluids that are secreted by these glands and it might have some hormones also so sperm fluid together they are known as sorry i'll write here semen okay 
So it's interchangeably used, but the sperm is specifically the male gamete and the fluid uh, present in it together is the semen. So what is seminal vesicle secreting? It is secreting a fluid, a liquid, which is rich in fructose and prostaglandins. Okay. You will not find fructose anywhere in the body in this, uh, in, in, in monosaccharide form. Okay. What is the type of sugar that is present in your body? Glucose. So you will find mostly the readily available uh, type of uh, sugar monosaccharide that is uh, there in your body will always be glucose. Only fructose will be present in the uh, male reproductive system. That's the semen. What is this fructose giving? It's obviously a type of a sugar. Uh, so this is giving what? It is giving energy for the sperm to carry out its activity. Basically, the sliding and the swimming activity is uh, facilitated with the help of the energy that is taken up with the metabolism of the sugar fructose. Okay. Prostaglandins are hormone-like substances which will help in contraction, which will help in stimulation of the contraction of the female reproductive tract. So whatever the semen is released, it will try to uh, create certain movements in the female reproductive time, uh, in the female reproductive tract during the uh, intercourse or during the copulation uh, period so that the substance reaches inside the female reproductive tract properly. Okay, so that's the role more or less of the prostaglandin. You will, uh, a short homework is, you will research more about prostaglandins on the internet and make a note of it and we will discuss it in the live class. Okay, for now, only this much it is re uh, required for you to know what a prostaglandin. So two important things, fructose, which will provide energy and prostaglandin, which are hormone-like compounds, they will help in stimulation of contraction in the female reproductive tract. Second is the prostate gland. What is this prostate gland making? It is secreting, making and secreting again a fluid, but what type of a fluid? A lubricating fluid, okay? Which will reduce the friction. So it will produce a lubricating fluid, which will have enzymes in it, which will help in maintaining the fluid medium at proper uh, viscosity for sperm mobility, okay? So prostate gland is giving that liquid which will help in proper mo mobility movement of the sperm. So the liquid, the environment of the sperm, the liquid environment into which the sperm is moving should not be very thick, should not be very thin. So it should be of the appropriate best fluidity. So that best fluidity is known as optimum viscosity. Okay, so that is provided by the fluid, lubricating fluid secreted by the prostate gland. Okay, yes. Then you have the sperm duct uh, tube through which the spermatozoa will leave the testes and enter the urethra. So... Uh, seminal vesicle, prostate gland, followed by the duct, which will collect everything and uh, put it into the sperm duct, okay, through which it will enter the urethra, fine. So, seminal vesicles and prostate gland. Uh, you can also, uh, one more short assign, uh, short homework is find out about prostate gland, which you will find in males only. So, males, when they are about 50 years of age or when they touch 50 years of age, chances of them getting prostate gland increases. Uh, one of the reasons is that if a male is having a very high uh, fat uh, containing diet, okay, uh, 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 his diet include a lot of fatty intake, so chances of him developing prostate gland cancer increases. Okay, now we understand why uh, the prostate gland and fat uh, intake in the diet because it might affect the viscosity of the sperms, and there will, there might be various other reasons. So we are going to research and we are going to make a note of it. We are going to discuss in the live class. Another is the copper's gland. Okay. So here somewhere, I told you bulbo urethral gland. Another name for that is copper's gland. So somewhere here it is present. Prostate gland, 
which we discussed is this. Okay, so minor vesicles, you will see some duct over here in the previous diagram. So here somewhere are the seminal vesicles. This is the prostate gland and this is the corpus gland or the bulbourethral gland. So even they are pairs of the like right and left. Okay. They also open into the urethra. They open in this main duct. Okay. It is situated in the membranous part of the urethra. So it is more or less connected to the urethra. It, it secretes what? Again, it secretes fluid, which is transparent in nature. It is a bit slimy, sticky and jelly-like fluid. This fluid basically is to maintain the pH of the semen, that is the sperm and the fluid. So maintaining pH is the work of the corpus gland. So this fluid, which is secreted by corpus gland, it maintains the appropriate pH, which is 7.2, that is alkaline, slightly towards alkaline. Okay, for 7.2 is here. Achha, why to maintain, why pH maintaining 7.2 is important? Because uh, it will help in destroying the acidity of the urethra and cleans it for the movement of the sperm. Okay, a urethra is a, urethral environment is a bit acidic in nature. So when the semen is released, when the sperms are there in the semen, so copper gland will take care that acidity is, much acidity is not there in the urethra. So it will try to make the environment alkaline for the proper functioning and movement of the sperm. Okay, so for that, copper gland plays a very important role that is maintaining of the pause the video make a note of whatever uh, word or whatever line you are not getting you are not understanding and ask me your doubts in the live class now moving to the last part that is the external part so we have a look at the different uh, labels different parts which form the external genitalia so mostly it is the glands penis we will start start from the bottom so this is the external opening external opening is nothing but urethral orifice over here then this tip is known as glands penis this is obviously the urethra. Then you have these two words, corpus cavernosum and corpus spongiosum. These are basically tissues that will help uh, in uh, structural maintenance of the uh, penis shaft. Okay. This is again another connective tissue which will help in uh, connecting uh, the penis to the pubic bone. Okay. So this ligament is another connective tissue. which is known as suspensory ligament. I'm just discussing the labels which are important for you to know and understand and remember. Uh, this is your urinary bladder. This is from the side view. Yeah. This is how the side view of the male reproductive system will look like. Here is your seminal vesicle. This is your ejaculatory duct. This is your prostate gland. Jo abhi humne discuss kiya, the corpus gland or the bulbourethral gland. Prostate gland here. Uh, and then the seminal vesicles uh, coming into this ejaculatory duct. This is the anus. Yeah. Here is the epididymis, the testes, and the scrotum. Okay, so we will just discuss this gland penis, uh, the opening scrotum and corpus cavernosum and spongiosum a bit in detail because these are now the external parts. Internal parts we have covered, we have discussed about the testes in detail. We have discussed about epididymis. We have discussed about the glands. Now we will discuss the external parts a bit in detail, which will form the external genitalia. So what is semen? So this is the fluid, uh, uh, the semen and the sperms and the fluid together, which will exit the male reproductive system. So it is viscous, slimy, sticky, and the fluid is uh, not very thin, not very thick, just appropriate for the sperm to uh, proper develop and mature, alkaline in nature, and it is somewhat milky fluid. pH will range from 7.2 to 7.7. .7. And it has all the secretion from the epididymis, that is the sperms, the accessory glands, fructose, prostaglandines, uh, then uh, the sticky fluid, slimy fluid from the corpus gland to maintain the pH. Yeah, 
then also it will have calcium ions you have other also uh, inorganic minerals will be present bicarbonate etc for the movement and activation of the sperms this we will see in detail when we will talk about fertilization in detail in the next part of the chapter so there the role of calcium will come into picture so everything will make up the semen okay the sperm plus all the secretion of the glands and other parts so the penis is the external part which is the actual organ responsible for carrying out reproduction which is also known as the copulatory uh, copulation or copulatory organ okay it has a lateral a posterior lateral tissue that is facing towards the back and side so this tissue is corpus cavernosa and the me medium layer the middle layer median corpus spongiosum okay so it is made up of these two linings you need to know the linings corpora cavernosa and the spongiosum corpora spongiosum yes the penis okay and uh, the tip is known as the glans penis the swollen part of the tip of the penis glans penis and it is having a covering uh, of membrane the membrane is a loose in nature a loose fold of skin uh, either you call it call it as foreskin or you call it as prepuce okay the scrotum is the pouch is the bag yes in which the uh, testes are held together properly positioned and protected and that held uh, that uh, you know putting uh, carrying the testes in proper place is done by this fibromuscular band known as gubernaculum so if this is the scrotum and sorry this is the testes so there is this band of fibromuscular tissue some fibers are there which will uh, help in attachment anchorage so this is gubernaculum it will help in attachment of the testes and the scrotum bag properly in one place okay the fetal testes are guided into it and retained in the scrotum by the uh, fibrous muscular band called gubernaculum and then they remain in this scrotum by the spermatic cord so when uh, the adult testis uh, uh, the attachment the gubernaculum turns into something known as spermatic cord okay so, so this is just a point of attachment for uh, helping the testes to be in place and protected uh, inside the scrotum okay uh, in some of the cases uh, if the testes while the fetus is developing and if the testes are not able to descend into the lower abdominal cavity uh, then that individual might suffer that that uh, baby might suffer from a condition uh, known as cryptokaidism so it, it looks like this so one testes will be present and one testes will be absent okay so failure of uh, the scrotum from the uh, from the upper uh, abdominal cavity to the lower abdominal cavity fails it might occur in 3% of male infants uh, it can be treated approximately when the baby is 6 to 12 months old uh, you don't have to worry about this stuff uh, and uh, if it is not treated it might lead to cancer also okay and uh, yeah that's all about cryptokaidism so that's all for this video in this video we discussed about the glands prostate glands the minor vesicle then the ex they are uh, substances which were secreted and what role do they have in the reproductive process and in maintaining the environment proper environment of the sperm then uh, we saw the external genitalia that is the semen uh, then uh, the scrotum and with the penis and the linings of the penis okay and a condition known as cryptothyroidism this is the assignment regarding uh, the topic of male reproductive system that you are going to do it write it and submit in the google form that i have shared with you so thank you all in the next video we are going to discuss about female reproductive system
So we are done with the male reproductive system. Uh, revise it, read it again, make notes of your uh, doubts, and we will discuss in live class. So thank you all. Take care. Bye-bye.